guys, I'm Yogurt Legacy, and welcome back to more Geek Speak. Whoop a doo! Um, today we're going to be reviewing the Game of Thrones game by Telltale. If you've never heard of Telltale, they make they are good at making like story based. Well, they're known for making story based games. I personally think they're pretty good at it. Um, so we're going to be talking about the Game of Thrones game that they developed. Um, I think back in 2014. And it's going to be a good time. All right. So first of all, uh, if you're not familiar with Game of Thrones, it's basically high fantasy. If you don't know about it by now, I'm very surprised. It's kind of all over the news, how many characters are kills and stuff like that. Um, so it's a very complex world that I find very interesting. And all the houses and dragons and wars and the history of it is very very complex and it's really cool so we're gonna be talking about the Game of Thrones game that Telltale developed um, I think it was like three years after this series kicked off and Telltale is uh, it kind of rose to fame after the Walking Dead game that it made and the Walking Dead was personally like a really like one of my coolest games that I've probably played because it's a really really awesome game and I really liked it and I might be able to do a let's play of it if I can get it. I don't know if I can, but I'll try. Um, so we're gonna be talking about that today. So first of all, I'm probably not, I'm probably not going to be talking about much of gameplay because there's not much gameplay to the thing. Like um, there's not much like it's mostly point and click. So you would like point your cursor at something and click on it or something like that. So we were so. Gameplay is pretty much glossed over because like it's mostly story stuff and dialogue choices, which I'm personally fine with. I like I like expanding storylines and being able to choose your own things, and uh, so it's gonna be a good time. So first of all, I'm gonna talk about the storyline and how strong I thought it was. I thought the story for Telltale's uh, the Game of Thrones game was actually pretty good. Um, I like the f I like all the houses. I like all the characters. Um, I like all the history and the the animosity between the houses and I liked all the all that stuff. Um so I talk about. Uh if you have not never played that game, it kinda it it revolves around the story of House Forester, which is a relatively small house that is known for making its ironwood. And ironwood is a very, very I don't know, is it I actually call it precious. It's a it's a very Resilient and precious wood, <laughs> hardwood, of course. Uh, no, ironwood. It's called ironwood. My bad. Uh, it's very resilient wood that is used in making like basically anything wood would be made for. Uh, so, yeah, they're ma they're for house foresters known for their ironwood, which they ship out and they use and they like, build sword hilts and shields and all this other stuff out of ironwood that's really really strong and really really high quality and their smiths and their woodworkers and stuff like that are very very skilled because they've been working for their um, for their trade for like generations or something like that so that's pretty cool I thought the ironwood thing was kinda cool um, that's just, <laughs> I kinda like having a different like method not method um, cause of the conflict between houses and sides and stuff like that so like the sort of the conflict of the thing of the matter is House Forester is kind of breaking apart and their uh, Ironwood is got to be taken over by the Boltons I believe they're called um, so they're trying not to get their wood taken over and you go through like the you kind of you kind of work through the uh, Forester family because um, the first Forester I believe you play as uh, of the royal family is Ethan, I believe his name is. And spoiler alert, if you have never played him, he kind of gets dead by the first episode. So that's always nice. Good killing children. I'm going to be arrested for saying that, aren't I? And so uh, off the topic, uh, yeah, Ethan is killed in the first episode, and then you make your way through. And even more people are killed. Uh, also, Lord Forrester, the head of the house, is killed at the Red Wedding. I think it was the Red Wedding. I don't know. I've never seen the series. I just know about it from my brother because he's really, really super duper nerdy about that. Anyway, 
Um, I believe he's killed at Red, Red Wedding, which is where uh, most of the Starks were killed, I believe. <sighs> Again, I don't know this. I, I just sort of know it. So people are probably in the comments like, Ah, you didn't do this right. Why do you give him a Russian accent? Doesn't matter. Anyway, um, so, yeah. So, Forrester are kind of being killed along the way. And the thing Game of Thrones is kind of known for is killing off its main characters, which I find really, really cool because it kind of distracts from, like, a fantasy stereotype that's been made, like, the main character will survive anything. Game of Thrones, not really, even though the main characters do survive, su survive some pretty intense stuff. So, um, it, the game kind of forces you to make really, really hard decisions, and it's almost like you're always picking the lesser of two evils when you get the really hard decisions, and you always have to, like, be careful what you say because it almost always has conf uh, consequences in the future with that person. Like, I believe there's one choice where, uh, your Lady Mira Forrester, who is a handmaiden to Marjorie, Lady Marjorie, who's about to wed Joffrey, who is the horrid little brat king of Westeros. And so, uh, I believe if you be rude to Raiden Marjorie in like some dialogue options, she won't help you as much, which is really kind of cool. I like having like, to watch what you say and be very careful with other characters and stuff like that. It's really, it's just a really cool way to like make you mind your manners around these people and really, really pay attention to the game. Um, I like the uh, uh, side note, I really like the art style of the game. It's kind of like a graphic novel, comic book kind of thing, which is kind of cool. I like that. And so, yeah, the gameplay, there is not much of that. But the story is really cool, and the choices you have to make, they're not always that hard, really. So some of them are hard, like, the one uh, who had to pick your sentinel, it was between, like, the warrior guy and the diplomat guy. And I was like, well, we want to avoid a war because House Forrester is very, very, very um, hard put in like military services and stuff like that. So they wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to sustain a war. But I think you go to war no matter what. I think that's the way it goes. And uh, saving Roderick or Asher, that was one of the harder decisions because you kind of need to know. Because they're both really, really good leaders, I think. They'd be good leaders of the house. I was like, are they really going to trust Asher as much as they trust Roderick? And my first playthrough of it, I definitely saved Roderick in that situation. So, yeah, the, the characters are really interesting. Uh, there's one was one decision where it was like, I think it was saving, uh, you, were, you, were, you were Asher Forrester and you were trying to save um, one of your companions from like a group of thugs and, and one of your companions from like a dragon. And I saved the companion from the dragon because, like, the guy has, like, three guys. The, 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 the one companion has three guys on him. I was like, he can take those guys. This girl, however, has a dragon on her. I'm like, the dragon's probably going to kill her, so I need to do something about that. But in the end, it really didn't matter who I picked. It just made one of them angry toward me and one of them like me. Which I find kind of dumb because, like, even, like, even Asher explained it. He was like, you see, this lady was being beset by a dragon, and you were all by three men. I think you could handle three men. And then the guy was like, I'm still manager. And so that was kind of like, uh, it's just unfortunate. So I've been rambling on for a while now. And so in conclusion, I really liked that game. Um, I give it probably like an eight out of 10, just because like some things are sort of predictable and some decisions kind of were like, oh, really? That's not what I had in mind at all, and like, that's just kind of dumb. And some things, like, you could control some dialogue options. Like, it would just, like, you choose one, and then he would go farther down that path, and would say something, com say something completely different from what you're trying to say, and that wasn't super great. So, it was a pretty good game. It was, it was a really awesome game. Um, like I said, 8 out of 10, not the best, but still pretty good. So that's all I have for Geek Speed on Game of Thrones. And so this has been Yogurt's Legacy, and I'll see you guys perhaps tomorrow. Bye bye.